Whether you are a professional, avid enthusiast, hobbyist, or are simply curious, I cordially invite you to join my team to share the joys of exploring the universe. I began this journey 14 years ago. You may have just taken your first step. Don't worry, nobody is late. Only recently has science advanced sufficiently to provide us with the right equipment to fill our backpacks and supply us with the knowledge, methods, and wisdom to guide us during the journey. These materials and knowledge will serve to keep us on the right path, heading straight to the target. Advances will also reduce the time spent wandering, being distracted or confused by our own guessing, theorizing, imagination, and quixotic intuition. Today's science offers many devices with unimaginable capacities available to anyone with the inspiration to pose many big new questions. Among those questions, many will propel us to the door opening into the hidden blueprint of the universe's structure. As an example, I struggled with one facet of a larger question that troubled me over the years to the point of annoyance. Then one evening, the totality of the question became apparent. Ever since, it has spurred me to work vigorously in search of an answer, as if it were a guest that would leave only after receiving a satisfactory reply from the host. On that historic evening, an old classmate visited me. While strolling around my backyard, his wife, on a pilgrimage to India, called. I courteously left my guest alone and returned to the house. Neither flowers nor green grass graced the garden during those last few weeks of autumn, I feasted my eyes on something less boring by watching my friend to see how old he had become. Chung had been the most handsome out of my entire 12th grade class of CVA High School. Examining what time had inflicted on a former Prince Charming's visage, I delved deeply into time's cruelty and the nature of the universe itself. While formulating a plan of discovery, another portrait that I had never contemplated before began to emerge. It contained a sizable invisible area, the truly realistic image of my friend's surroundings. I had surmised that these surroundings constituted an empty space. It was not. Chung stood next to a pear tree at the center of the garden, talking and at times laughing. The evening sunshine sneaking through the gaps between clouds illuminated his frame and revealed some glittering silk-like filaments that connected his shoulders to his head. Ha! My poor friend just hit a spider web. Three silk-like web threads draped over Chung's shoulder and headed straight into the infinite, represented by the phone line linking Chung to his wife's phone, located on the other side of the globe. That phone line was not alone. Zillions of similar invisible phone lines passed through his body, heading to his phone. These phone waves also were not alone. They had many companions sharing the same space. Light waves, radio waves, and an infinite number of waves composed of unknown particles were arriving from all over the universe. They surrounded my friend. They went through roofs and walls. Some pulsed through the entire thickness of the planet, traveling with light or near light speed. Thus, Chung's surroundings did not constitute an empty space as my eyes told me. The space was full of filaments, or thread-like matters with chains of an infinite number of particles. Chung was not alone, confined inside that utterly crowded space. His wife shared this identically invisible environment at the exact moment in an Indian city 8,000 miles away. Sitting only dozens of feet from Chung, I received the same number of waves and particles. The only difference was that the couple's phone waves did not affect my phone's chip. Our experience was not unique. Individuals worldwide are constantly submerged in a sea of waves all the time, night and day, asleep or wide awake. Only people who live in the wild, far from civilization, beyond science's reach and lack network coverage, receive fewer radio waves. However, even those remote inhabitants withstand gigantic storms of natural waves coming from space. They simply lack receipt of the relatively few man-made waves. The invisible spectacle, once fully perceived, immediately triggers this question. How can the space around Chung, around the globe and in the sky, handle the traffic of zillions of waves that move together at extremely high speed? How can the universe control and guide them to travel safely 
causing no disastrous entanglements and huge crashes. As I noted, a more limited question had visited me numerous times. How can a smartphone perform so many unbelievably complicated tasks and provide miraculous results? The easy answer has always been Mr. Steve Jobs and all the geniuses around him. If you wish to know more, just grab a couple of books about making the iPhone or other smartphones and your curiosity will be sufficiently satisfied. This question is small because it only encompasses the wonder of the phone, missing the fantastic elements that make telephonic conversations possible. These phones send and receive man-made radio waves. The universe provides a traffic system that allows waves to move safely at an extremely high speed. A zillion waves fit into the tiny space of a chip due to the waves being super thin. Traditional line-based telephonic voice traffic was clear and straightforward. Phone wires were protected and bundling thousands or millions of them together presented no significant problem. Each wave had a dedicated path. The phone wire of today, however, is different. It is absolutely naked. Mr. Chung's phone, for example, generates radio waves that propagate in infinite directions, sharing the road with zillions of other waves that are also totally naked. Then all of them squeeze themselves into Mrs. Chung's phone, located on the other side of the globe. We send radio waves into the sky and let the universe take care of the transportation and delivery. The universe performs this task beautifully, beyond our expectations. Every naked invisible phone line travels along a safe road at the speed of light, along with zillions of other unprotected waves. They all reach their destinations intact. How? The universe did not wait until Mr. Steve Jobs invented the iPhone to build the new highway or railroad to greet the waves of this new kind of device. This extraordinary traffic system already existed, probably since the beginning of the universe. We must know the universe's structure in detail to answer the question. By now, you recognize how lucky we are. Living today, we can formulate the questions that lead directly to the front door of a hidden treasure trove containing all kinds of mysteries of the universe. The old generation of scientists, Einstein included, never encountered such an opportunity because at their time, mobile phones did not exist. Benefited by the fruits of our time and followed by the guidance of this precious question, I have reached the front door and found the key. The door is opening. Join me, my friends. Standing on the shoulders of a giant named science, we will extend our observation range into infinity, reaching the deepest corners of the sky. The first target is the infinite small environment where all the minuscule particles that comprise our universe's basic foundation reside. Dark matter. 